Welcome to the Cross Border Injuries, the show where we sit down with local elected leaders from across Canada to learn about who they are, what drives them, and how they are working to make their communities a better place for everyone who lives there. My name is Christopher Brown, and I will be your host for this exciting journey. This episode of the Cross Border Interviews was recorded live at the SUMA Conference in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan in early April. And our guest today is none other than Warman Councillor Richard Beck. So, Richard, I want to start with the question I've asked every single politician I've ever sat with. Where did your sense of duty to serve come from? Great question. Uh, you know, certainly with this year, like, like um, you know, for me, I guess I was always... Uh, felt indebted to society, you know, in that whatever, right? Um, you know, certainly growing up um, with well, this year, I did grow up in the in the lower mainland of BC, and that kind of thing. And yeah, with well, this year, you know, just kind of questioning, hey, how did our roads and services ever kind of get there? Um, with well, this year, I did come from a uh, you know from you know from a family that. Uh, you know, you know that was very business oriented, you know, and whatnot. So there again, um, understanding what uh, was, was kind of happening with, let's say, like the federal budgets, you know, that kind of thing. You know, let's say your federal budgets, uh, provincial bu uh, budgets. But really, with this year, we didn't give much consideration to like the, let's say, like the local municipal budget. So that was really overlooked, I think. You know, let's say growing up, and um, you know, I guess you know, you know, kind of discovering, um, you know, exactly how that world kind of worked and whatnot. It just kind of said, hey, you know what, like that fits in very well to, to my, you know, you know, let's say, you know, you know, to, you know, to certainly understand more. Uh, so with that there, um, yeah, just, you don't know it until you try it. So, um, yeah, so I've always been, been interested, you know, uh, basically from, you know, just after graduation uh, going on forward. Um, and then when I moved to, uh, to Saskatchewan here in 2002, um, I, I purchased my first home in Warman. Oh, yeah, wow. Right, and that kind of thing. So that was the first home that I ever owned and, and whatnot. And um, yeah, with this here, uh, quite honestly, we, uh, with, with the Legend Center, or let's say what's now known as, known as the Legend Center, um, with this year, that was a project that was supposed to be one third fu you know, funded uh, federally, provincially, and also municipally. And that was put on hold. Right, and that kind of thing. And it reminded me of a situation back in uh, in Maple Ridge. We called it the Pink Elephant, right, and that kind of thing. So, uh, basically, uh, what it was, it was this this uh, this, this uh, pink building that was right on the corner of Lloyd Highway and uh, and the what we called like the Mission Bypass. And anyways, with this year, it, it was basically a a, a building that um, just had lots of turnover because it just couldn't survive. Yeah. And uh, with this year, like the uh, the municipality. It, had tons of issues with that so once once I seen that the project for the uh, you know for the rank was you know let's say put on hold right and that kind of thing it you know and I you know just quickly looked at our at our population numbers right so we were this year we were basically population 3700 at that time and I was just going like hey you know we're talking you know a six million dollar facility that there divided by the number of tax bases sorry that exceeds my income right so so anyways I was going like you know what I don't want that pink elephant in, yeah. in the city that I, or now let's say the town that I purchased my first home in. So that really kind of got me, you know, let's say, you know, really, um, you know, like I guess emotionally invested. And then with this year, we also had a transition that had happened um, uh, basically about a year before uh, the 2009 election. And that is we had Loris uh, basically transition over to take over the, like the municipal garbage services. And um, yeah, like there again, seeing that that deal was already kind of signed before it was announced really got me kind of going like, you know, uh, like the public engagement wasn't there, right? So it just seemed like it was just like the small group of people that made this large concern, you know, like this large decision um, that has this, you know, full municipal impact. And I didn't feel consulted. So I was like, you know what? I, I need to, you know, certainly, you know, find it within myself, find out more and uh, certainly get involved. So yeah, that's... So that's the journey that's, to council. Yeah. But I want to, I want to jump into something that you talked about, sure. about engagement you as councillor have been elected to make decisions for the best of your community but you also have to engage your community yeah. one of the big things on this show that we try to find out the reason why it's happening is the decline in apathy towards municipal governments we are seeing lower turnouts every election for municipal governments when it comes to engagement, how do you see yourself as councillor engaging with the community of Warman to ensure that the best 
decision is made at the council table when you make that ultimate ca uh, vote cast cast gotcha. that ultimate vote yeah yeah and um you know like i certainly you know think for myself you know not whatever that um you know with with the collection of people there you know you know that i you know uh certainly engaged prior to my my announcement to, to first run, you know, not whatever. I've kind of relied on that same circle, you know, not whatever, you know, in terms of hey, how do they how do they see things going, you know, that kind of thing or whatever. Um, not n not to say that I haven't let's say you know, let's say like involved or probably like evolved in my thinking or, or or that kind of thing, but with this year, I I like to deal with people, right, you know, that kind of thing. And there again, knowing how they see the world and what what their thoughts are and um you know this year i think you know even though that our like our community in warman has you know basically multiplied by by four times its size you know since i first got engaged but this year i'm i'm i'm, I'm still seeing like a lot of those like those same traits you know and that can with, with the people that are moving in so with this year knowing understand and let's say understanding the basics as to what's important to them and overlaying that with with our with our stats, you know, not whatever, right? So there, like there again, like uh, crime was was certainly big in terms of attraction for our community being, uh, let's say, let's say, growing the way that it has, right? Because like there again, a lot of people were searching out for alternatives from Saskatoon, largely because of safety. And also with this year, like our sense of community, right? And that and whatever, like we started off. You know, like I said, basically like that 3,700, you know, in 2002 and, you know, this year grow very rapidly to yeah. basically 13,000 now in, uh, in uh, you know, 2022. So with that, like that's a huge amount of growth. But with this year, like like our, um, you know, like our, our like our family stats, right, and that whatever is with this year, we are the professional um, family and that whatever, you know, and that kind of thing. And um with this year, what what attracts people to Warman is our safety. With this year, the opportunity for recreation for their kids, so that way their their kids can grow up to be superstars and have all the opportunities that you know you know that uh, that parents you know, feel that they've missed, you know, and that kind of thing. And you know, overlaying that there with you know just you know just that beautiful place to live, right, and that kind of thing. So, so I guess that there kind of forms that underlying base on there. And I've, you know, myself in terms of engagement, I'll, I'll deal with people on, or, and, you know, kind of listen to, you know, to what they have to say, it, largely when they're not really expecting it, right? And that kind of thing, honestly, going grocery, stock, you know, shopping and that, whatever, standing in line, hearing what they're saying about the snow removal. Is that the best time to get up? information, do you believe? Uh, well, like, don't get me wrong, well, like, yeah. you want this one-on-one -on -one from time to time, yeah. but w the overheard conversations. The overheard <laughs> conversations, I tell you, like, there again, people people feel relaxed, right? And, that, and there again, when they're relaxed, they're more apt to tell you what it is that they're feeling and think, you know, you know, and that kind of thing, when, when it's, you know, not feeling like they have to be direct, you know, you know, and that kind of thing, you know. So, with that, um, yeah, you know, like I, like I guess I use that as, as, as those common examples and reinforcement as to what people find important. When it comes down to the actual decision, right, and that kind of thing, I, I approach it from a 360 degree, you know, uh, let's say thought process, right, and that kind of thing, and that is right from, you know, you know, let's say, you know, let's say kids growing up, right, and, and right on through to our seniors and that kind of whatever is what is our policy doing, right, and that kind of thing, and you know, with this year, like. If I was to try and explain this policy to my neighbor and that whatever, like, what is my neighbor going to tell me? Okay, what is the neighbor's kids going to tell me? What are the neighbor's parents going to tell me? Right, and there again, when you think of all of that and you put it together, um, you know, with this, you know, I'm mean, like, I'm mean, like, I understand that it's administration's role to bring out the perfect policy, right? And the perfect policy can be great. However, to me, that's a data point. Right, but the perfect policy is also the perfect policy for administration. It's not going to be the perfect policy for resident A, B, exactly. C, D, right. E. <laughs> exactly, and and quite honestly, I mean, like that—that's what I do reinforce, right? Yeah. You know, and that kind of thing, saying, "Hey, you know what? When a when a you know when the administration kind of brings you know, let's say, a policy forward, and that kind of thing, it's up to me to be that second sober thought and saying, okay, that's great. That's a perfect puzzle piece, right? And that one, but how does that fit in the overall puzzle?" Right, because like there again, you know, you know, like if that if that doesn't work well with the other surrounding pieces, then with this year, it's it's basically out of place. So with this year, like like what can I do to make sure, or let's say, what questions can I ask to make sure that that, you know, that that policy piece is working good in that overall framework, and that my neighbors are going to accept that. But at the end of the day, you're not going to please everyone, right? 
right? You, you know that. I'm oh, pretty absolutely. sure you know that 100% of the people are never going to yeah. be happy with the decision you make. And quite honestly, like, one thing that I found, um, and I'll explain why, why, yeah. why I don't really use social media, um, but, you know, with this here, like, one of the things that I found, it doesn't really matter what, what the issue is. It's virtually a 60-40 split, okay? And that whatever, you have 20% you know, on, on the outside that are... 100% against it, you have 20% on the other side, and that 100% for it. It's that 60% in the middle, you know, not whatever, where it's kind of like, okay, what what actually, you know, makes sense, you know, and that kind of thing. And you have that conversation to see, okay, you know, what's the appetite? You know, like, does it, you know, is it accepting of it? You know, you know, and that kind of thing. And there again, what the negatives are, if it's if it's a um, decision that, that does need to move forward, right, and that whatever, and everybody's not in agreement, what can you do to make it more palatable? You might not be able to, you know, to stop something from happening, but there again, what can you do to, you know, to make sure that it's, um, you know, let's say, best representative of, of, of what the community needs. So how do you do it? Uh, how do, how do I you do balance? It? How do you balance the what the community needs against what the best direction of the city? Because yeah. I guarantee you, if I go to Warman tomorrow and I talk to a hundred people and I ask them a question of saying, "What is the issue that you want addressed today?" They're all going to give me a hundred different issues: Absolutely. potholes, parks, this, that, or the other, infrastructure. You as council, you as councillor, have to take those issues that people are talking about and then look at your budget and go okay, who's going to be the winners and losers here? Because you don't have enough money, and I'm not bursting any oh, yeah, bubbles no, no. here, oh, yeah, no, <laughs> that yeah. you're not going to be able to solve every person's issue. So how do you balance the needs of what your community wants with the growth and the changes that your city is going through? Yeah, and and, and that's where, quite honestly, like, like we you know, you certainly look back to the, you know, let's say like the very like the very top item, you, you know, um, in terms of what kind of formulates our city, right? So like there again, like that's your 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 official community plan, right? So there again, we did a lot of work, uh, in basically uh, 2010, 2012, right, right through that area, making sure that we set out the plan. As as to exactly what, um, you know, let, let's say where the community was set to go, right? So there again, we did population projections of extreme growth, right? You know, let's say like the, let's say like our average growth and whatever and what slow growth would look like. And then also with that there, we kind of tied to population numbers and that kind of whatever, things that we were going to need from our community. But we didn't say, hey, you know what, this is what we need or whatever. And we basically asked, hey, you know what, first of all, what, what kind of things do you, are you looking for? Right, so at, you know, certainly at that time there, the um, uh, like you know, let's say like an aquatic center was very high on people's list, and it still is now, right? Um, but there I'm again, sure every community <laughs> that doesn't have an aquatic center, it's on the top of oh, every list. Yeah, even for sure. a population of 200 people, an aquatic center is on the top of the list for some reason. Yeah. Um, you know, so I'm like, there again, even though that, that, that was uh, the top of the list, it didn't mean that that became project number one, yeah. right? And that kind of thing. It just meant that its importance is there, you know, and that kind of thing, in that, in that the community had that emotional attachment to that particular project, which is, which is wonderful and fantastic, right? Um, you know, like there again, to get such a clear result as to, hey, you know what? We all want this, right? And that kind of thing. Well, and, and there again, like you said, you know, like the, the demand on resources is, is huge, right? And like there again, you can't be all things to all people if if you could we we, we wouldn't need government right and that kind of, or or don't, don't tell people what, that <laughs> no, and well, just so you know when i when, when i do say government you know like there again you know like i suppose that i've always looked at government as 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 the as the operations you know not kind of whatever but with this here when it comes down to governance you know not kind of whatever like there's civic governance which is what we do and then there's also politics okay. on, <laughs> on on the on the provincial and the federal le level where you're carrying a flag right so so i do see a bit of a difference on, on, on that you part. you have sparked the conversation that i've been having <laughs> a lot today okay. and i want to point uh, ask a poignant question to you yeah what does good governance mean to you yeah, uh, you know, good governance, I think, is, you know, certainly like that balance where where everybody has the opportunity to succeed. And, and know that like, um, with that, good governance is is a form of communication, 
right? And, that, and quite honestly, communication is, is really the essential part behind governance. It, it, it's, it's how we talk to each other, right? Because like with this year, um, you know, for our, for our administration, you know, and that kind of thing, whether it's within our, uh, with our own municipal office or whether it's within our public works office or our recreation office or even bylaw, you know, that, whatever, like there again, everybody can put out the different messages, right? However, why bylaws are so important or even like public policy is so important is it's like, you know what, we all agreed in this black and white you know, you know, set of documents, rules, you know, and that whatever, and that there sets our our basic understanding as to how we're going to approach problems, right? Because like there again, like I, you know, very, you know, very, very similar to my motivation of kind of joining council with this year, it, it was about solving problems, right? And that going, and that's that's really why I do what I do, right? And it's you can't solve all the problems in the world, you know, and that whatever, and yeah, well, you probably. You no. can. You, yeah, just, no, you need it's, a lot it's, more money. A lot, of t- <laughs> a lot of time, and you know, and there again, like a lot of resources to go into that, right? But where where the where, where the bylaws and the policies come into place is, you know, what that's the groundwork for everyone. Right, so it doesn't matter what your what your age is, what your background is, what your religious you know affiliations are, or you know, and that kind of thing and whatnot. It is basically that standard declaration of saying, you know what, in the city of Warman, this is what we believe in, yeah. right? And and this and this is how we're going to work to solve those problems. And there again, not everything can be addressed in there because you always have like the like the changing uh, technology and way to, ways to do things. But you always have to kind of go back and update that, you know, just to make sure that it is current, you know, to reflect uh, where you are as a municipality and also what what's important out there. So, you know, you know, certainly, you know, like that document you know, kind of serves as that public platform as to, you know what, we're all agreeing that this is what we want to do and, and, and how we see ourselves growing. And there again, like these are living documents, right? Because you can change them, let's say, any time. So with that, um, you know, if, if there's anything in there that, that a resident sees and goes, hey, you know what, um, I'm, I'm really not in favor of this, you know, that whatever. It's like, okay, well, you know what, let's have the discussion on that, you know, and that can, let's see. How much what, does know, respect come into play? Well, I mean, like, respect is huge, right? You know, because, like, there again, um, in, you know, in terms of any time that someone has a issue, right, and that whatever, um, like, there's an emotional attachment, you know, and that whatever, and sometimes the emotion can supersede what the, what, what the ground level is, you know, and that kind of thing. So, really, with this year, it's basically about understanding what's actually important, right? So... You got to dig down. You have to really see what that fundamental problem is, right? And that, and then from there, establish. Okay, what can we do to mitigate that? You know, that right? Like, what can we do to actually solve that problem? So, quite honestly, when it, my my personal process is, if someone has an issue, I listen to the whole argument. You know, that whatever in terms of you know, like really kind of taking in into consideration what what the emotional attachment is you know and that kind of thing and try and link that to you know okay how does that relate back to to the topic of the question you know once once we get down get down to it um you know because like there again when when someone's passionate honestly i i love passionate people and it, honestly it doesn't matter if you're it, you know whether you're it's a conservative you know uh, po- point of view a liberal point of view ndp you know however you want to label that i i actually like working without the labels you know not whatever because because you're there to represent the city right oh, absolutely. you're not yeah. you're there to represent the conservatives or the liberals you're nope. there to represent the best of what the city can offer exactly yeah, for sure. Yeah, and that's and that's let's say like that whole you know let, let's say governance aspect you know that is different from from municipal and or pardon me from uh, provincial and federal politics, right? Because with that there, you're you're carrying whatever color flag you know that kind of for whatever party, and it's like okay, we need you to be on side with this and this and this. Well, sorry, you know, I mean that's where I I, I don't think I would fit very well into that into that world, because yeah, I'm sorry, I need to deal with the issue for what the issue is right and that kind of thing and bringing bringing the problem solving skills to that right so you know so by doing that you know like like there again someone has an issue it's you know you're basically emotionally charged not a problem explain it so that way there uh, that way there i can hear everything in your you know in the emotionally charged things okay from what i'm hearing now 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 i'll have a set of questions okay what is, well, why is this important to you? You know, how does this work and whatever. So, and, and there again, just kind of confirming those details, just so that way there you can make, let's say, put it down into the box. And then after that, from there, independently, put it all back together and then just go, okay, 
So now without the emotion, this is what I'm hearing. Right, and that kind of in there again. If you if you can take that and you can you know let's say virtually you're holding up a mirror, okay. But there again, if you hold up a mirror to someone and say, hey, you know what, talk to this guy, you know, and that you, you're you're really going to get a negative reaction, right? But in you know in the end, you're you're listening, you're understanding, and you're reiterating back because like that reiteration back and getting that like that nod of approval is really important because now you're basically saying I've I've heard you I now understand what it is that you mean I might not be able to fix that problem right here today I might not be able to fix that problem tomorrow but you know what at least with this year that gives me that sense right now when I'm having other conversations out there and whatever I kind of hey if if we were to go with something like this how would you feel about that you know, and that kind of, right? So, yeah. so there again, kind of building that consensus of, of like that, you know, let's say like that inventory of issues over time and, and not be reactionary, right? Quite honestly, I, what, I, what I really see in this world right now, and I think it's, you know, why there's so many, it feels like tensions all over the place, right? And sometimes big, sometimes small and whatever and that kind of thing, but, but everybody's, you know, tense in terms of, you know, what they believe and what they can say and, you know, and that kind of thing. But like there again, if, if you understand, you know, let's say through your conversations as to where, what people are kind of thinking and leaning, then with this you can kind of throw it out there. Hey, what if something like this here was to happen right? or for that particular kind of situation? And you go, hmm, that might actually work. Okay. Oh, you know what? Now we're on to something, right? And then from there, just trying to build something, but trying to be reactionary to the last Facebook post. Right. I remember I told you, I, I, I don't really engage in social media in that community. Do you think that makes you a better counselor? Uh, I, I, what I think it does is I think it gives me a unique perspective different from my counterparts, right? So like one of the, one of the things about board culture, right, and that kind of thing is with this year to not group think, you know, that, right? Like there again, it's easy to go, oh yeah, hey, you know, sitting around the council table, I know this counselor's thinking this way, this one's thinking that way, and that kind of whatever, hey, this, this year should pass, or this year would fail, or whatever, and that kind of thing. But there again, going in into every, every decision, right, and that, whatever, and really reflecting on, you know what? what is my position on this? And my position does not have to reflect that of my council members, right? And that, whatever. And, and quite honestly, what, what you really need to have around the council table is what, what you said earlier, like, like respect, right? Yeah. And that, whatever. Because you have to respect that not everybody's going to see, see things the same way, right? So there again, when you are bringing something to the table, understand it's not going to be universally accepted, right? And, that, whatever. and it doesn't mean that they don't like you, you know, and that, whatever. And it sometimes it doesn't even mean that it's a bad idea. It's just they're not ready to accept it. They just haven't kind of, you know, kind of evolved to that to that particular thing yet, right? So, yeah, and, and there again, not to say that any position is right or wrong. And, and I guess that that's one of my strengths, you know, in that kind of thing as, as, a, as a counselor that I see myself is, you know what, to not... You know, so with social media, I let my wife, you know, kind of go on. She's like, oh, hey, did you hear about this? And, you know, in that corner. So she, she certainly keeps me updated and whatever. And I was like, yep, yeah. you know, I, I, I could certainly imagine that there being the conversation, right? But honestly, I, I tend to steer away from the, 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 the social media and whatever to not get emotionally charged, you know, in that whatever, and not be, let's say, swayed on that common or let's say that like that latest round of thinking right because like quite honestly you see like a lot of these uh, like like these uh, posts and whatever and that whatever and the issue is here but everybody starts reacting oh, to someone it starts here home. and by like two exactly. minutes later it's yeah. at z already and you're going well, yeah. how did we jump there already yeah so you know so i guess that's why i try and you know certainly limit the amount of um exposure that i have to uh, to the social media because with this year i don't want to get dragged down like that same, like that same, you know, like line of thinking. I want to go, hey, you know what? From everybody that I've talked to and that whatever and that kind of thing and all, you know, since 2009, right on through to, to current day with everybody that I've talked to and whatever and blah, 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 blah. Honestly, think of it. If you told this to this person, what, how are they going to react? You know, and now consider all the different age groups and that kind of thing, whatever. Like, you know, and there again, Many times, like it's not like there'd be one one particular you know consensus on it. But with this here, okay, what can I do that you know t from what what's in black and white in front of me to make it palatable so that way there at least there's wins everywhere, 
right? And sometimes, you know, that's not, and that's not achievable, right? And that kind of thing. I mean, like there again, when you have, let's say tax structures, you know, and that whatever that, hey, everybody has to contribute more. And, and you know that your neighbors are struggling, paying the bills or doing whatever, regardless of, you know, family or, or life situation. Right? Well, this year you go like, oh, you know what? You really want to, you know, try and be as easy as possible on that person. But there again, you know, you have that, dedif- you know, that like that whole dedication to asset management and how that, that all relates. So you need to balance the scales, right? So I mean, obviously with this year, you don't want to do, you know, let's say like the full, you know, you know, that, so right. So there again, you, you start you know, there again, go, going through the checklist as to what's most important, right? And that whatever, is it, is it the asset management and whatever, but yeah. you know, like there again, preserving that fund, but still meeting the day-to-day challenges and know that, Hey, what can I do to, to limit expenses? What can I ask my recreation department to say, Hey, you know what? This year I need you to find an extra 2% in your budget. Maybe I need you to find 15% on your budget, you know, not whatever, you know, in terms of savings, you know, just to try and help mitigate those costs, right? And that kind of thing. And, you know, just try and try and balance out the best that you can. So you can't be all things to all people, but you, for me, like I try and raise my game to be as much as I can, you know, not whatever, to kind of smooth things over. And, um, yeah, just try and work towards that ultimate document of that, of that, let's say, like the whole official community plan. And let's say, under, you know, just kind of re- re- reverting to uh, Warman's official community plan. Underneath that, we came up with a environmental master plan. We came up with a recreation master plan in terms of what are your priorities, you know, and that kind of thing. And we did the full public engagement, right? We actually hired a company to actually compile all of the information. We did the surveys. We did it all online and that kind of thing and whatnot. Um, even with our businesses, you know, and that, whatever, you know, to kind of gauge what's important to them, you know, for things kind of going forward. So, like, I realize that that's, that's a lot, you know, and that whatever, but, like, there again, when it comes down to those decisions, like, at least you have those documents and those, and those stats that were done to turn around and say, you know what, I remember from when this was, was presented, you know, and that whatever, and, you know, like, there again, we went through all of that, and th- this is what, you know, what was said, you know, and that whatever, and quite honestly, I'm, I'm doing my best to, let's say, respect that, right, because it's that public document, and you're trying to live up to that. And, you know, to be receptive of, you know what, when is it time to redo that? Yeah. Right. So like there again, it's all of those things. So like there's so many competing interests, you know, and that whatever. And that's, you know, you know, certainly too, like, like whenever you, you see a message out there, right. Or like, you know, let's say all of the information that I consider coming to my council table, right. In terms of information, whether it comes from administration, third party, you know, and that Facebook page, you know, post or whatever, and that whatever, to me, it's just a data point. Okay, and, and I'm not trying to say, oh, well, you know, it's not important, you know, and that kind of thing. But, you know, with this year, someone else's information just kind of serves as, okay, that is one piece for me to, to you know, to, you know, to add to the stack of, okay, what do I consider, you know, that kind of thing, when do I consider it, and basically how do, how do I formulate that? So for me, I'm, I'm very, very structured in terms of trying to understand what, what the issue is and let's say like the different layers as I've kind of described them and how that kind of goes on there um, to actually, you know, formulate what my final decision is, right? But there again, even if it's a decision one way, it's like, okay, you know what? Like there's a few outlying factors. I might not be able to solve them today in this, in this particular decision, but you know what? They're not lost. How can we, you know, eventually get to solving those problems, you know, and that whatever, or, you know, or those concerns and that kind of thing and trying to get to that in, let's say, a future date. So you've been around the block for some time now. I'm not trying to. Oh yeah, no, no, for sure. Old, yeah, no, no, no. You've been elected a few times. There's a lot of councillors, a lot of mayors in different provinces who are just in their first hundred, two hundred, three hundred days in office, their first year in office because they were just elected, and there were big changes. What advice, as someone who has been in government for some time, would you give to a new term councillor? Yeah, um, you know that you wish you would have had. Oh, uh, well, like that, that there did certainly, you know, certainly changed my answer. Right. But, uh, you know, certainly for me, like even, even when I had decided, you know, and that kind of thing that I, that I wanted to, let's say, run, run for council and put my name in, um, like there again, I'm not well known in the community, you know, especially at that time there. Right. Cause like, the, you know, like there again, population 3,700, cause I was working full time in Saskatoon and, you know, kind of going back to four, you know, back and forth, don't have kids. Right. So with this year and, uh, you know, with this year, I didn't have much of a social structure. Right. So I'm going like, I'm throwing my name out there. I need to know what I believe, right? So, honest, one of the things that I did is I challenged myself for a solid six months, you know, like whatever, 
is paying attention to the news and that is, what do I believe, you know, that like whatever, why do I believe it, you know, and that kind of thing. And with this year, kind of get into that, you know, um, you know, like that determination of, you know, who am I, you know, and that kind of thing and, and whatnot, and try and make myself, you know, let's, let's say, you know, let's say, let, you know, certainly able to engage on the current, you know, concepts as, yeah. you know, as things were kind of happening out there. And, you know, just to make sure that I understood the landscape, but I understood how I fit into it. So a solid knowing of self is a, is, is, is a very solid, you know, starting point. Right, and that thing yeah. because honestly, I wasn't ready to believe the first thing that was kind of going on, or you know, kind of take on other people's beliefs and say, "Hey, that's that's what I need to bring to this community," based off of one person's idea. No, it's like you know what, but this year, yeah, like honestly, like like what's important day to day, not whatever. How does that relate to you know to my neighbors? So so I so I guess that that was you know kind of starting even prior to actually officially holding the position. Oh, yeah, so so that there, I would say, was probably the most important part, right? And that kind of thing. So. So I know what I was when I started. The other thing that I've, you know, kind of done is with this year in, in, and not be reactionary, right? And that, whatever. In, and that is try and be as predictive as possible. And you're not trying to solve the problems before, before they arrive at your table, right? And you're not trying to create problems, you know, and that, whatever, by going out into the world and saying, oh, hey, because I, because I want to get to this, hey, how do you feel? How do you feel? And what, hey, you know what? I've got 10 people over here to get to this result, and that, whatever, and then trying to forward that. It's quite honestly, you know, with that there, you know, like let those issues, you know, you know yeah. certainly develop to the point where, where it comes at my table. However, having that knowledge and understanding of the landscape long before it gets there. And you know, I'm not saying that you're, that you're being absent to the issues, but there again, I'm, I look at it that I let the freedom out there, you know, and that whatever, determine what the issue is rather than me setting, setting up the issue or setting up the solution, right? And that whatever. I might, you know, formulate a few different solutions out there. Um, and quite honestly, there's been a few times where I've said, oh, hey, guys, we could just do this. And oh, my, you know what I mean? Like somebody just set a bomb off and whatever. Oh, no, we can't do that. Can't do it because of this, this, and this, and this, and this. And there again, that's not constructive, right? Yeah. So like there again, um, like, like that in, let's say like that first reaction, you know, not whatever, when, when something's put out there, um, can really stomp good ideas. Right. So I've, you know, through those couple of things and, you know, through learning as to, you know, how people react to things and whatnot, it's kind of, you know what, I'm going to sit back. Not a problem. I see the issue. Not a problem. Hey, I would like to get to here, but that's just me, you know, and that kind of thing, you know, and really, really work. You know, let's it, let the system work the way that it's supposed to and know what what my lane or what my role is in that in terms of actually just making that final decision or you know making sure that 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 the right consultation kind of happens prior to there right so there again as as the situation kind of develops out there asking administration hey you know what have we looked at you know how the community feels about this. Maybe our economic development officer can look at this aspect and whatever and that kind of thing. Just, just to, and, and, and honestly, like, like I found a lot of success of making those um, not related to a specific topic, you know, and that whatever, and just saying, hey, you know what? I'd like to see something along here, right? You're just kind of seeing something, you know, coming through that might actually hit your table in, let's say, six months and that kind of thing. It's like, oh, hey, look, we were just talking about that. More, you know, and, and there again, having, having that data point processed through a uh, progression, you know, not whenever, where, where, where your administration has, has kind of done that work and it doesn't come polarized in terms of them going, hey, you know what, this is the easiest way to get from point A to point B, you know, not whenever, within, within the municipal, or it's like there again, municipal governance and whatever, like the, the organization is trying to be as, as uh, streamlined as possible, yeah. right, in that kind of thing. So with this year, not trying to say that administration would cut corners, but like there again, you know, certainly that there, it's like, oh, you know what? If we did it this way, that would ease off all of this work up over here. Let's recommend that. That that there can work within our system. We're good. And there again, that that to me just serves as a data point, right? And that kind of thing. So now with this year, it's like, okay, like is that actually the best? Let's say the best way to go about it, or let's say like the like the best decision, right? Counselor, thank you so much. Um, you are probably the best person to have on a show like this because 
I, I That's love great. when people are informed and engaged in their community, and it sounds like you are. So thank you so much for doing this. Excellent. Very good. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you so much to our guests for joining us for this episode of the Cross Border Interviews. And to our viewers, thank you for tuning in and being part of this conversation. If you've enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of our latest interviews and special episodes. We have some amazing guests lined up and we can't wait to share their stories with you. If you're able to, please consider backing the show to help us to continue to grow and produce more high quality content. Every little bit helps. We appreciate your support as well. A link to our Patreon account is in the show notes. And if you can, please don't forget to subscribe to our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more behind the scenes content, show updates, and so much more. And finally, as much as we all love our phones and technology, let's remember to put them down and have real life in-person conversations with the people in our lives, even if it's just for five minutes. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Cross Border Interviews. And remember, everyone, just keep talking.